Hello and welcome to Health Dialogue Show. I am Dr. Bhumika and as seasonal illnesses surge, many people find themselves confused about whether their symptoms point to a simple viral fever, dengue or even COVID-19. While these conditions can start with similar signs like fever, fatigue and body aches, their causes, risks and treatments vary widely. To help us better understand how to distinguish between these three illnesses and know when to seek medical care, we have with us Dr. Anna Kundu. Dr. Arnab Kundu will break down the key differences and offer, and offer practical in guidance for staying safe and informed. Dr. Arnab Kundu is a consultant at Narayana Hospital, Havra. He's an MBBS, MD Internal Medicine. He has done his PG Diploma in Cardiology, DCH in Pediatrics, Fellowship in Pediatric Intensive Care and Cardiology. He earned his MBBS with honours from Bojwan Medical College and completed his MD from Command Hospital. Dr. Arnab Kundu is an eminent internal medicine and critical care specialist and cardiodiabetologist known for his dedication to patient-centered care. He holds a fellowship in pediatric intensive care and cardiology from RN Tagore Institute of Cardiac Sciences and a PG diploma in cardiology. Dr. Kundu is recognized for his innovative, empathetic and sincere approach to medicine. I welcome you to the show, sir. It's a pleasure to have uh, you on board. Okay. okay. So my Anyone? first question to you is, sir, what are the key differences in symptoms and mode of transmission between dengue, viral fever and COVID-19 that the general public should know about? Actually, uh, at times, uh, these symptoms are very overlapping and uh, it is very difficult to and by viral fever, it's actually dengue and COVID-19, both are viral fevers also but by, the, by viral fever, I think, uh, Mika, you mean the common cold and seasonal flu that is very common in this particular season and uh, first let us come to the mode of transmission in case of dengue it is a vector borne disease as we all know it is transmitted by uh, mosquito uh, and uh, it is typically Aedes aegypti and Aedes albopticus mostly they are a daytime bites in Aedes uh, mosquito and for COVID-19 and also the common flu or typical viral fever that we uh, as a layman's language say to the seasonal flus the mode of transmission is airborne by airborne that is it is a man to man or human to human transmission via aerosol or droplets that are generated by exhaling uh, forcefully or by sneezing or by coughing so these are aerosol or airborne diseases and that's why the Infectivity uh, transmission rate is higher in those cases. For COVID-19 and common flu, both are same, almost. And as of the symptoms go, uh, let me take uh, the common cold or uh, typical viral fever. In this case, there is fever, there is nasal blockage, running nose, sneezing. Uh, there is malaise, body ache, headache, and usually. Uh, the symptoms uh, persist for a few days, maybe two to three days, and then uh, gradually, uh, with symptomatic treatment, also even uh, they reduce. In case of dengue, it is very important the symptoms uh, for the general public also they should know few things. Uh, dengue mostly 75% of the dengue infections are asymptomatic. There is no symptoms. For the rest of the cases, lot. Uh, happen with uh, milder or very few symptoms like just fever, uh, body aches, electroorbital pain, sometimes rash or purpura that is the bleeding spots, uh, body ache, as I said, malaise, fatigue, uh, sore throat sometimes can occur, but uh, which is also very common for the viral flu or viral fever. But the people, general people also must know what are the dangerous signs or warning signs of dengue. When you need to seek immediate medical help from uh, the expert. First and foremost, there is uh, extensive abdominal pain, pain abdomen that we call it. If there is pain abdomen, next, if there is persistent vomiting, if there is any restlessness or excessive lethargy in the patient or there is uh, bleeding from any of the sites like gum bleeding uh, in case of uh, women vaginal bleeding uh, some form of uh, blood vomiting or black stool or also the danger signs means clinical accumulation of fluid in the body that is abdominal distension shortness of breath and 
self shortness of breath uh, is a is another warning signs so these four five things people should keep in mind and should seek immediate medical care and in case of covid again a lot of covid particularly this omicron variant which is nowadays uh, here uh, right now the the variant worldwide uh, mostly happening is a uh, nb181 and in india it is 2.86 this variant is a variant of omicron and it is a recombinant virus except g as per the uh, nomenclature uh, so uh, there can be simply milder symptoms that is some nasal blockage uneasy feeling uh, some cough sore throat body ache and at times it may rise there is fever fever extensive cough is usually it is a very relentless uh, irritating type of cough and the danger signs become these are also to be remembered uh, is shortness of breath that is when the respiratory rate increases or the work of respiration increases or if you have pulse oximeter uh, at your home or nearby if the saturation drops below 94% so these are the signs when you should urgently seek medical care that was very nicely explained sir uh, so my next question to you is what are the tests that are required to confirm each of these illnesses yeah this is very important in case of dengue uh, there are uh, two major tests one is a ns1 antigen that is uh, that becomes positive uh, in the blood by almost 24 hours after the infection and it stays positive in the blood till fourth to fifth day of fever and the second and most confirmatory test is dengue igm it becomes positive in the blood from the fourth or fifth day and there were thereafter it uh, remains positive for a few weeks and also there is a test of uh, that is a dengue igg and uh, this igg denotes or the positive igg denotes there has been previous infection not immediate infection in case of immediate dengue infection igg doesn't come okay and next is a common cold in case of common cold usually the diagnosis is clinical that is a physician's prerogative but yes if somebody wants to diagnose which virus is harboring inside the respiratory tract there are tests these days we call them nucleic acid amplification test or pcr polymerase chain reaction uh, we take uh, sputum or at times nasopharyngeal swab and we test them with pcr for the nucleic acid of the virus and identify the virus uh, it's sometimes also called biofire and uh, for covid as you all know the uh, uh, confirmatory test is rt pcr for covid 19 there is also antigen based test but those are mostly for epidemiological study or for screening but you have to confirm it with rt pcr and also there are supportive uh, tests like test x ray or ct scan uh, which can show in z rays some blood test uh, depending upon the severity of the disease but the confirmatory test is rt pcr right sir uh coming to the treatment part sir how is treatment different for all these three illnesses well uh, first of all there is uh, one very interesting common uh, treatment of all these uh, three diseases that the mostly the treatment is supportive that is we can't do exactly hit those viruses and we treat the conditions associated with the disease that is called supportive treatment for all of them supportive treatment is the mainstay for dengue there is no definitive agent that works against dengue again i as i said uh, dengue can be asymptomatic dengue can be treated at home at home usually it is treated with uh, painkiller and anti uh, pidegesic that is paracetamol and plenty of water simple home based food and when the danger signs or the warning signs occur we usually admit this patient and after admission there are two three mainstay of therapy one is uh, fluid management that is very critical and to dengue treatment and uh, uh, regular uh, checking of the hematocrit and platelet values and also other few other tests and also if management of any bleeding 
if there is low platelet count associated with bleeding we get platelet transfusions etc or common cold again the treatment is mostly symptomatic but also if we are talking about seasonal flu that is influenza a and b uh, for those there is a antiviral agent oseltamivir so which works very good it is also used in sars uh, swine flu virus and for <coughs> covid 19 yet there is no uh, definitive treatment there are there are three mainstay of uh, treatment one is there are various experimental antiviral agents like we all know during the 20s and 21 uh, 2021 22 era of covid we have <coughs> sorry extensively used remdesivir remdesivir is a rna based uh, rna polymerase and also there is uh, molnupiravir uh, they are effective by some reports also nowadays another agent has come this is a nucleo uh, pro, this is a protease uh, antiviral this is uh, nirmatrelgir plus ritonavir combination they are being used second the therapy as i said uh, the, there is a role of steroid in case of uh, moderate to severe dengue and uh, there is venous thrombolysis prophylaxis is all given and the risk statement is supportive the fluid balance if there is shortness of breath the, if there is oxygen deficit then we give oxygen sometimes it is low flow sometimes it is high flow and at times if the thing goes more severe the patient may need ventilatory support so these are the basic treatments but again uh, not to be worried most of the covid 19 also is either asymptomatic or causes very mild uh, symptoms that can be treated at home and only 5 to 10% cases they are very serious all right sir okay so my next question to you is are co infections possible like can a person have both dengue and covid 19 at the same time well to some unfortunate people this can happen this is not very uh, common thing but yes this can happen theoretically and i have seen few patients and definitely if there is co infection uh, the prognosis is slightly uh, worse in those cases and again as if uh, since you talked about co infection in case of covid there can be co infection with various variants of covid and this gives rise to recombinant covid virus that we denote in the nomenclature by x so yes co infection is possible but not very common all right sir okay so my next question to you is like we have vaccine for covid so are there vaccines available for dengue and other viral fevers also so what is your take well, on that well dengue uh, vaccine is a real burning topic right now uh, till date only usa has manufactured one vaccine dengue vaccia it is fda approved but not available in india but again we are atmanirbhar bharat so we are developing our own indigenous and uh, vaccine by collaboration one is qdenga under uh, final phase of trial it is developed by japan and india collaboration also there is one indigenous vaccine developed by icmr that is dengue all Uh, both are <coughs> live attenuated via, uh, vaccines and uh, the good news is they are expected to be marketed in india by 2026 uh, and i think there is a plan to incorporate that in the national immunization schedule from the government and for common cold or common viral uh, infection to or uh, there is influenza vaccine of course and it is available from uh, age of one year every year it has to be given because there is a mutation in the influenza virus very frequently and covid vaccines you know covid shield and covax uh, covax in india dengue vaccine they are coming next all right so that was very informative uh, and my last question to you is what advice would you give to families on how to stay safe and prevent these illnesses during the rainy season this is very important uh, and probably the most important take home message for the viewers 
uh, how to stay safe that happens occurs in everybody's mind for dengue the mode of transmission is different so you have to uh, be alert on few things please stay away from mosquito okay use nets use mosquito repellents use creams when outdoor don't let stagnant water uh, be collected around your home where the mosquitoes or the larval growth happens keep clean the uh, your neighborhood so these are the and do regular spraying it is usually done by the authorities the municipality or government so these are the method for dengue and for common cold and uh, covid the method is same best method is to use mask and please use an n95 mask not a mask uh, or surgical mask or mask uh, made of cloth according to the fashionable wear matching with the dresses please use a n95 mask and uh, frequent hand wash and for covid-19 also there is a safe social distancing 6 feet we all know these are the most important parameters to stay safe using mask is of paramount value in fact i would like to share an interesting fact from the pre covid era to post covid era uh, one very fatal uh, disease in india with a very high death rate has drastically been down due to extensive use of mask we use mask for covid but some other disease has drastically decreased that is tuberculosis so we can call it collateral advantage so please stay safe use the proper methods and best of luck for that thank you so much sir the entire session was really informative thank you for your valuable time thank you bhumika it's nice talking to you looking forward for another